Yeah, I so loved the um, the talk that David did after the Eternal Sunshine. He was talking about um, tracking back uh, through time to before time, and I think of that very much like this causation lineage that was given, uh, because. When you start with the have, and you go up to the do, and then up to the feeling, and then up to the thought, and up to the belief, you end up with the identity. And understanding, each time as I would track it back in my mind, it would take me back to, what do I believe I am? <laughs> because all that follows has to prove that in every way. It has to flow from that and, and be the manifestation of it. So every single seeming issue that I perceived as a lack, a limitation, a problem, it ultimately sourced with I was identifying with that which is limited. And that just the awareness that all of these things flowed from a misplaced I am was just such an awakener for me. There we go. Yeah, um, I hear what you're saying, and I've tried to do uh, some of the things you're talking about. I have I fell off a horse many years ago and broke my foot in five places, and um, I'm always it, it's in pain. It has pain right now as well. It, it's always has pain, and I've tried so many things to get this. You know, pain. What I've offered in dollars and euros and everything <laughs> to <laughs> to have this pain go away. And I don't know any what to do anymore because I want this symptom relief. I, I mean, um, and I can't see why it serves me. I I I I I recognize that that absolutely is a possibility, but I can't see the way, and I'm so tired of. Being in pain. Yeah, but if we, if we use the, the chart or the rings that I talk about a lot, or the rings I drew out, was the, there's the perceptual world, which is the outer ring, and then the emotions are underneath that, and then your, your thoughts, and then your beliefs, and then your desire. So if we looked at that ring, concentric circles and everything, and we said, okay, broke my foot in five places, and it's been like like almost constant or consistent pain, and also many dollars, euros, and much effort spent at, at addressing the symptom. You know, it's really gone on to the feet, you know, there's been a huge focus, sounds like for years, on the feet. But that would be like, out of this entire outer ring, that's like this little spot out there. Yeah. Just like somebody, when they say they, they find a, a lump in the breast, or they find a, a spot in the lungs, you know, and then they put all this effort to go after that spot. This is, we'll tell, this whole ring is the entire cosmos of time and space. All the galaxies and planets and stars and, and countries and so forth. And then there's this speck on Nete's feet that's there. And you've put a lot of energy going right at, at that. And what we really work on is, is first of all, to take the focus off of, of that because but that's the, that's an effect, and so when the mind is so riveted, riveted, riveted on an effect, then it's even if it's and it sounds like you have done a lot of metaphysical searching, and you've been searching your whole life and really trying to really connect with Jesus and and really connect with that real deep experience, but by pulling the attention off of it, and then opening up to what I call this awareness that that. The problem is not anything to do with feet, but the problem is a perceptual problem. Uh, you know, first of all, seeing a world that's not there, that's, we could call that hallucination. Yeah. And then seeing fragmentation in that world, which is not seeing it as a whole, it's just seeing it in parts, you know. That's a perceptual problem, and it, it does seem to take lots of, of convincing, but you know, I'm telling you right now, this is this is where the relief will start, is is really coming to that admission that it's a perceptual problem. It's reframing the problem from the feet, which is the spot, and it's pulling it way back. And it's saying it's much more profound than that. 
That's just a tiny little effect of it. You know, you could say, well, I still have hunger, or I still have thirst, or I still have these different, you know, drives that seem to be part of being a human being. Those are all part of the perceptual problem too, but the feet get all the attention, you know, because of the pain. It's like a focus there. So, once you start to do that, then it's like, I, I guess for myself, when I started to frame it in that way, then I started to put my full attention into what is holding up this perceptual problem, what's propping it up, what are the underpinnings underneath it. Um, not with a specific symptom, because there are some great authors like Louise Hay, for example, who actually do a pretty good job of, of tracing back specific symptoms to uh, various thoughts and belief systems that are underneath. They really do a, a spectacular job. There was one of his pamphlets, I think it was uh, maybe the psychotherapy pamphlet, uh, where Jesus said, you know, a careful tracing back, uh, you know, it's, it still won't bring the relief because the only thing that heals an unforgiveness is forgiveness. So it's like the the release point is way, way, way back in the mind. And even that tracing back sometimes, even though it can be helpful, only forgiveness heals an unforgiveness. Only forgiveness heals a grievance. And the grievance, as you know, Noel's been sharing, is, is much, much deeper in there. In fact, it's so deep in there, it doesn't even have, have any kind of overt or obvious connection to the symptom. Many times you could say, what's this happening? Well, how, I, how is this happening to me? You know, I can't possibly believe in this or this or this consciously, but subconsciously there's a lot of things that are buried down there really deep. So, to me, all that this does is when you start to see that, you, you get, you have an impetus to go much, much deeper. And, and it's really a time of rejoicing, you know, it's a time of uh, not kind of saying, look it, I've failed to find a solution to this specific symptom, it's more like, hallelujah, I'm getting to the point where I can start to say, I have to look much deeper inside, in a much more general way, not so much looking for specific symptom relief, but looking for perceptual problem relief. And that's like a huge difference. And, and for me it starts with 100% acceptance of the symptom, of all of it. As long as I'm, oh I hate this and I want to fix it, and, and all that energy that you put, and as I described in my story, all that energy I put, all those doctors, etc. That was all resistance energy. That's all perceiving the problem out there, and literally, the doing of all those attempts reinforces it. It strengthens it in exactly what our egos want us to do. Believe the problem is out there and do X, Y, and Z to try to fix it. And like the Course says, you know, that is all designed to not find the solution. Seek and do not find is, is the only thing that the ego promises. <laughs> So, that was an eye-opener for me, just in my own journey of realizing whatever I'm fighting, I'm perpetuating. And the trying to fix it is, is a battling with it. So I was shown the power of acceptance. Uh, and I was just sharing with our group this morning, I, I woke up with this little resist it, accept it, give it to spirit. It, I was shown what tends to happen for me in any given day or in a cycle of my life where there's something it seems like I initially resist it, like you're experiencing. Thinking it shouldn't be there, believing it's wrong that it's happening, uh, that wishing it could be fixed and then I could be happy. So resistance. And then finally, oh, it's here for a reason. I may not know what that reason is but I accept it 100%. I allow it to be. With no, as much as possible, letting go of the judgments about it in any way that we have. And something about that acceptance is the, is the doorway to allowing spirit to come in and work the miracle. 
So that third step for me is always, okay, I accept it's here, but I don't know what to do about it. I can't, like that admittance that David's talking about. I don't know and I can't fix it. And like you said, I'm tired of trying. I'm so damn tired. Hallelujah. You know, like they call it bottoming out with that. That's it. I'm just wasted doing this. I give it up, Spirit. Show me the way. I don't know. Yes, but still sometimes, I mean, treatment or therapy or something works, even if I don't change my mind. I had symptom uh, that for many years I couldn't even hold my head up. Uh, I was, it, I was so much pain in my neck, so I lay down every like every hour. I had to lay down, and uh, and I did always, you know, I, I tried so many things, and it didn't go away. And then at one time I was in a therapy about something completely different, and we came down to where I was giving birth to my daughter, and I was lying that least, you know, with the, and pushing her out, and I was screaming, ow, my neck! And then I came home, and I didn't even think about it. And a couple of days later, my husband said, you're not lying down anymore. I have completely forgot I had this, and I had it for years. And I mean, I didn't change my mind there, but something released, you know, so it just... I, I witness that type of phenomena yeah. quite often yeah. in my journey with all of this. And, and for me, part of it was, um, I, I so believe, you know, in the, in the case of seeing something shift by applying some kind of magic, you know, doing a therapy or whatnot, yeah. that that's what my mind needed to allow the miracle to happen, to allow love in, and to let this little piece of self-punishment go. And sometimes I, I just, the letting go Spirit did undo it. In other words, uh, just the moment of I'm going to let myself be helped and the Christ can dissolve uh, what we've been clinging to in mind and we don't even know it. Yeah, so, so it is a shift of mind, but, but it may not be an awareness even that. You may even have a conclusion saying, I didn't shift my mind, but it, it just disappeared. And things don't just disappear or appear even. Uh, the mind is very deep, and it has lots and lots of tricks, mm. and uh, it's like these magicians that seem to do all these things, and it's like, how are they doing that? You know, it's, it's very open to suggestions and so forth, but, but it is the, the seat and source of everything, and then you, you begin to open up to the idea that the mind is extremely causative. It's, it is causative, and the world of effects has no causation, but that's it's going to have to transfer in a lot of areas, because it's such a pervasive belief. Mm -hmm. So this just really gives you an opportunity, you know, it's, it's like when we live in spiritual community, things are arising all the time. Uh, emotions are coming up, and it can seem like there are external causes of the emotions. So and so said this, so and so did this, uh, and, and then I was having a great day, and then all of a sudden I heard such and such, and then, oh. My, I just shut down, or I, I went into sadness, or whatever. It's, it's a deeply rooted belief in these externals as having causation. And the, the foot is just like a, a, an opportunity. Almost like, you know, like Noel was just saying, like if you interviewed the foot, like, okay, you definitely got my attention. Yeah. Uh, what have you got to say for yourself? You've had my attention for years. And then, you know, <laughs> and you interview your foot, and it's like, yeah, okay. there's, you can get down to the purpose or the meaning underneath it. Nothing happens by accident, and it's almost like if you just, instead of just thinking like, ah, this is a part of myself that I can't stand, that I've tried everything with and put all this time and energy and money and everything in, just try interviewing your foot. And, and asking it, you know, what are you, what are you trying to get out of this? What, what are you doing?